Here in South Africa, we have a lot of choice. If we want to go on holiday, we have some of the world's most beautiful places right on our doorstep. If we want to have a laugh, we have any number of politicians at whom we can point and poke fun. And when it comes to cars, well, the list is just about endless. Unless you want a four-door, rear-wheel drive V8 sedan, then your choices are somewhat limited. And those limited choices are expensive. BMW M3, Jaguar, XFR, Lexus, ISF, Mercedes-Benz, C63, AMG. All of them will set you back over 800,000 Rand. There is only one choice then if you want big power on a budget that isn't so big. And this is it, the Chev Lumina SSV. Recently upgraded, it now features lower and stiffer suspension, Brembo brakes in front and big chrome wheels. The wheels for me let the side down a bit because by comparison the rest of the package isn't nearly as over the top. Without wanting to be condescending, the Lumina is a simple thing. It's not too clever or over designing. Its big bumpers and big wheel arches let you know what it's about from the get go. It gets to the point and I like that about it. I haven't read any press notes on the design of this car because I suspect that there aren't any. For once, there aren't paragraphs of marketing blather trying to convince that the subtle lines of this car speak to the lineage of the brand values and other such nonsense. The Lumina is what it is, and it uses a design that's easily understood and even simpler to appreciate. Except for those wheels, I don't know what they're about. At just under 5 meters long, it's not a small car, which just adds to its presence, as do things like the double exhaust tailpipes and rear spoiler, both of which point to something special up front. And this is that something special. A 6 liter V8 with 260 kilowatts and 517 newton meters. 0 to 100 times, 6.2 seconds, top speed 250. Now, here's something to consider. Our test car is fitted with a 6 speed auto, which is 10 kilowatts down on the 6 speed manual. but they cost the same. Not sure how Chev worked that one out. Usually the automatic option carries a bit of a premium. I suppose what you lose in power, you gain in the convenience of not having to worry about a clutch in start-stop traffic, which the Lumina doesn't really mind thanks to its cylinder on demand technology that shuts off half the cylinders when the power demands are low. But once you're through the traffic and onto the other side, you can use all eight cylinders. And the first thing you notice when you put your foot down is the fantastic V8 soundtrack. And that just encourages you to keep your foot planted. But there is another reason you want to do that as well. And that's because the power isn't all that instant or initially that impressive. I'm not sure if it's because we've been spoiled by the Europeans slapping turbos and superchargers to their big engines, but somehow the Lumina just doesn't feel as good as other V8s. The others feel like volcanoes that explode into action, where this feels like that goopy molten lava that rolls down the hillside. It's still hot, just not as scary. Things aren't really helped by the ride setup either. The suspension upgrades have improved grip, but the feedback from the car just isn't there. The steering is accurate enough, but there's just not enough feel, so you can go into a corner safe in the knowledge that you'll come out safely on the other side, but you won't have any fun doing it. And it's the same with the automatic gearbox, which never feels like anything but an ordinary automatic gearbox. And yet I know the Lumina can be fun. I learned to drift in one of these things, albeit in a manual with a racing clutch on a skid pan. I just get the feeling that this car relies on a bit of hooliganism before you start enjoying it. And honestly, if you don't have M3 budget, you probably don't have the 19 inch tire replacement budget either that driving like a hooligan would require. There are, of course, other practical considerations to this car, besides 16.2 liters per 100 kilometers. That rear wing that adds downforce when you're up to speed also cuts in half your rear view. And for some reason, Chev have fitted a side mirror that's got an optical illusion. You won't see it on camera, unfortunately, but what it does basically is zoom into the spot behind your blind spot. So that's very good for making objects in the rear view mirror appear closer than they actually are, but it also deletes your blind spot. So you keep having to check over your right shoulder to change lanes just to be safe. 
The one place where the Lumina can hold its head high is the interior. It's not finished in the world's finest materials, but it is comfortable and very well specced. It's got everything from top class leather seats to park distance control with reversing camera, dual zone climate control, Bluetooth, cruise control, and it's all well laid out and a pleasure to use. There's even enough room in the back to pack a couple of passengers and then scare them to death with your hooligan tactics on the way to dinner. I really wanted to like the Chev Lumina, not just because it's a car I'd never driven before, but I was hoping it would be an underdog that showed those European V8s and their ridiculous price tags a thing or two. Unfortunately, it doesn't. Is it a good looking car? Yes. Can it handle? Yes. Is it comfortable? Yes. The 507,000 Rand asking price includes all of that. Unfortunately, it just doesn't include any driving joy. The V8 has promising stats and sounds the part, but doesn't deliver with the kind of menace that we've become used to from similar motors. The Lumina is a purposeful looking machine with a decent interior, but it doesn't deliver an enjoyable drive on an everyday basis.